Listo, pues creo que ya estamos aquí la mayoría. Solo quiero darles las gracias a todas y todos por estar aquí el día de hoy. Déjenme presentarles a John Gurley, que es eh, voz y guitarra de Portugal de Man. Eh, para que sea como todo más fluido y más ordenado, solo si alguien necesita ayuda con la traducción, ya sea de su pregunta o de la respuesta y tal, eh, avísenme y les ayudo. Si no, pues ya lo dejamos así para que salga más fluido. Y pues nada más, lo voy a decir rápidamente en inglés para John. Y eh, les pido por favor que en el chat me pongan, levanten la manita, bueno, levanten la mano y de preferencia lo pongan en el chat para yo ir apuntando quienes quieren hacer una pregunta, ¿vale? Ok, so now, John, here we have our colleagues from news outlets and media outlets here in Mexico. So I uh, already introduce you, and if you want to say, you know, a few words before the Q&A, and I'm here to help and translate anything that you guys want, okay? Sure. I'm so excited for this. This is we're coming back, finally. Thank you so much. Okay, so now let me check on our chat to see who's already raised their hand. <clears throat> For a question okay just give me a second please okay eduardo lopez from mr indy eduardo please go ahead with your question gracias hi john nice to meet you nice to meet you okay well In 2020, we're expecting the particip participation of Portugal Demand on the Viva Latino Festival, but you couldn't attend uh, due to COVID. And now, on this year, we have the participation of Portugal Demand at the Viva Latino. So, how do you feel to be part of this edition of the festival? And One can, what can we expect for a Portugal Demand show on a festival? Wow. <laughs> uh, I'm just excited. Mexico is, it's literally our favorite place to go. Like we just love playing in Mexico. We've always had such great times. Hotel parties, uh, going out, hanging with people. We always laugh a lot in Mexico. So I guess we're just gonna try to bring some some old songs, some new songs, just the energy, you know, try to bring our energy and, and, and leave it there. Well, thanks so much and hope to see you at the Viva Latino next month. Yeah, say hi if you see me. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Eduardo, gracias. So now, uh, Arnulfo Vasquez, I'm going to help him translate the question. Arnulfo, démela y ya yo la traduzco. Hola, ¿qué tal? Muy buenos días. Eh, hola, Adriana. Buen día también. Hola a todos. Hi, John. Hi, how are you? Eh, hey. Nice to meet you. Y bueno, eh, you. quiero preguntarle a, en este caso a John, que, bueno, ¿cuál es la experiencia? ¿Qué tanto tiene de, bueno... ¿Qué tanto tiene conocimiento acerca del festival donde va a estar involucrado el primer día del día 16 de marzo? Es decir, la banda. Y obviamente una banda de Alaska, es la segunda, una banda de Alaska. Obviamente, pues, este, ¿qué es lo que piensa de todo esto? Que el rock está muerto, está desplazado totalmente por toda la, la moda, las tendencias. ¿Cuál es la posición acerca de eso? Sé que hay apertura, pero finalmente los cambios son los cambios y sé que el rock no está muerto. Gracias una vez más y te agradezco mucho, Adriana. Gracias. De nada. Ok, so Arnulfo's questions are, first, you know, how much do you guys know, you know, as a band and you yourself from uh, the festival, Vive Latino? Um, I guess I, I would say not a lot, just mainly because the way this band has always worked I, I like to walk in and just see what it is and and learn it and I don't really look up a lot around these things I just like to go and see what it is and and let the day present itself okay 
Arnulfo, él dice que no saben mucho, pero que a él realmente le gusta como ir y conocer y, y ver y que salgan las cosas. Eh, for the second question, he is asking you, what do you think about, you know, that some people say that rock is dead due to like new musical tendencies, that if it is something that you share or do you agree and basically what is your stand on this wow i, I love this question <laughs> no i wouldn't say so i i would say that rock is is more than guitar rock is and and punk rap music has taken over a lot of that like a lot of like youth culture it's always youth culture it's it's always about the next wave of that that energy that is it's coming at the system you know you want to take it down i i know that feeling of being a young kid who wants to take it down i think it just takes on a different form every, every generation of rock music takes on a new form and it will always exist as as it has in the past Ah, pues él básicamente dice que no, no cree en eso y que siempre es como un movimiento de, de la juventud y, y que toma distintas formas y que siempre ha existido y, y siempre ha habido como jóvenes como él en su momento también que quieren derribar el sistema <ríe> y ya, pero que no cree que estará muerto. Pues muchas gracias, Adriana. Thanks a lot, John. And rock on because the rock, the rock is alive, it's forever alive. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Hell yeah. I'm Gracias. <laughs> <laughs> bueno, now we go on with Luis from Miskit Radio. Luis, por favor. Ah, ya te vi. Por favor. Hola, Adriana. ¿Qué tal? Pues, eh, igual, solicito tu apoyo para la traducción. Nice to meet you, John. Hi. Eh, hola a todos. Nice to y bueno, you. Esta parte de llegar a un festival tan grande de cultura musical como lo es Vive Latino, Portugal de Men, podrá ser un homenaje completo a Chris Black. Y bueno, ¿qué piensan aparte de su canción de Summer of Love, que en México alcanzó en las distintas estaciones de radio eh, uno de los conteos eh, estar en los primeros lugares, ya que es una canción que, que involucra muchos sonidos? about how do you feel about coming to such a huge festival uh, and if you think about or if you will consider doing an homage to Chris Black and about the song ¿Me repites el nombre de la canción? Summer of Love, of love? Summer of Love uh -huh. Yeah, I mean we'll definitely be playing Summer of Love I think you have to play some of those songs that just They're such a huge part of this new album. And Chris Black, to, to all of us, Chris changed our lives as a band. He, he really did, it, it, through friendship and community. That's what this band has always represented to me. It's always represented community. And I, I see so much of that in Mexico. It's, it's why I really, really feel so attached to Mexico. When we come, come out there, I see the community. I see people coming together. I see really great food. Food is very indicative of, of culture and the, the people around you. Like you can feel the love in the food. And I just, I just love being out there. I, I'm, I'm really excited to take Chris Black with us and we'll be down there always paying homage to Chris. Thanks. Uh Perfecto. Ese sí, ya no te lo traduzco. Ajá. No, está bien. Cierto. Thank you, Luis. Vale. Yeah, thank you. I love thank you. this, ah. by the way. <laughs> this is so cool. It is. Thank you. Now we have Yarki from Conciertos Fin de Semana. Yarki, ¿dónde estás? Que no te veo. Yarki, where are you? <clears throat> I think he's not here. Okay, so now with Israel Martinez from Heaven and Hell magazine. Israel? Israel. Hola, hola, ¿qué tal? Ah, ya. Yeah. ¿Sí me escuchan? ¿Tú dices tu pregunta o yo hola, la digo? ¿me escuchan? Sí, sí te escuchamos. We can hear you. 
Este... Nah. Ah, no, este, yo decía que si me la podías preguntar tú. Ok, sí. So, Hola, Israel ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo están? Wants to ask, uh, what do you think about the, this edition of the festival and if there are any bands that you're looking forward to see from the lineup? Well, I haven't even looked. You know, it, I always see the problem that I have is I look at the festival and I go, oh my God, I want to see them and I want to see them. And then they play on a different day. <laughs> for yes. Us. And so I like to show up and I see who's playing today and we love watching music. It's my favorite part about playing festivals and, and playing such, such beautiful places is you get to see amazing acts in a, a whole new setting than where we grew up. We grew up in Alaska. So I, I get to be in Mexico watching amazing music. It's, it's really special to me. Thank you. Listo, Israel. Uh, now I move on with the question from Rodrigo Garcia from Mundo Young MX. Uh, he says, uh, what will you take as a memory or a learning from the Mexican audience uh, from your last visit to Mexico? Uh, it, it's a, appreciation for, for each other, appreciation for the arts, appreciation for music. That's something that the United States does not have. They, it, You see an appreciation for culture and art in Mexico, yeah, more so than it, most anywhere else in the world. I, I see that that there. And it's it's a really beautiful thing. It's very inspiring being around people who live live for music because I live for music. Thank you. Now I have the question from Yarki from a little while ago. He's asking that if you know any Mexican band or if you have seen any Mexican band, you know, from your last visit or perhaps from Spotify or something that you are looking forward to see this time on this visit. Oh, wow. God, there's so many that I have a very good friend named Josue Rivas, who we work together a lot. He's always sending me such great Mexican playlists. Um, Natalia Lafricade uh, performs on our on our new album, Chris Black Changed My Life. And he is so incredible, such an amazing person. Um, I didn't I didn't know who she was when we when we met and we just had dinner together and we hung out. We hung out for a few days with Natalia. And the third day of hanging out, somebody says, we should listen to her music. Do you know her music? And I go, I, I don't, she's just Natalia. Like, she's just this great person that we've been having food with and hanging with. And. We sit down and listen to our music and I go, oh my God, I've been listening to you for so long. And I mean, how how amazing to meet an artist like that, who is so humble, so down to earth, so cool. And then realize that she's been making all this beautiful music that I listen to. Thank you so much, John. Now I move on with Cesar Muñoz. He is from Proceso Magazine. César, dime tu pregunta y yo la traduzco. Ok. Eh, ¿Qué nos puede decir de la evolución de los festivales en el mundo, como el Vive Latino, incluso el Coachella, donde se revisa y se exponen grupos, pues vamos, este, latinos, tanto anglo, y en una diversidad de estilos musicales? César is asking, what would you say about evolution of music festival festivals in general not only like vive latino or coachella where you can see such a variety of bands and artists you know from different genres what would you say about that um i'll, I'll give you my honest take and it's that in in the u.s and in, in europe it feels like things are getting flattened i guess um musically it's becoming flattened It's, it's less representative of culture. It's less representative of these, the country that you're playing in. 
Mexico and uh, South America as well. Um, Asia, like it's it's very rare that you end up in places where it is representative of culture. And that's why I'm excited for this festival is is there is actual cultural representation there versus the flattening of the culture that happens across Europe and, and America currently. And that's my, my honest answer. I'm not trying to slight any of those festivals, but I am saying I'm excited for this because it, it is representative. Thank you. Uh, te digo rapidísimo, César. O sea, sí, dice sí. que a diferencia de otros festivales en Estados Unidos o en Europa, donde siente que está como más aplanado o más, no sé, que no hay tanta variedad, eh, le gusta mucho eso de, de este festival donde sí se ve esa variedad cultural y de géneros en, en los artistas y las bandas que se presentan. ¿Vale? Gracias, Ahora, now we move, de nada, now we move on to Leslie. Leslie Romero from Canal de Oriente TV. Leslie. Uh, hi. Um, how, how about the thing the, of Mexico people, Portugal? What was that? How about Otra vez que no te entendimos, Leslie, por favor. How about things about the Mexican people, Portugal? How do I feel about Mexican people? Yes. Oh, I I love them. <laughs> Are you kidding? Uh, it's it's really amazing coming down there and seeing, as I mentioned earlier, the care that's put into to the food, the hearing the music, see again seeing cultural representation, uh, where where we're at and and the love for that. I mean, you you really. I mean, you're in a really beautiful place, and and the people people represent that as well. I, I I absolutely love it. We've had some of our best times in Mexico. We laugh a lot. We end up in parties, <laughs> and I, I can't say we always go out to parties. But when I'm in Mexico, I'm going to a party because it's the most fun. Okay. Do you like you know, the food Mexican? Absolutely. Uh, oh, the best food in the world. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding? I, it, this is a conversation that happens in our in our bus a lot. What's your favorite type of food? And I, I'm pretty sure the answer is always Mexican. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to Mexico, Portugal. Thank you. Gracias, Leslie. Gracias. So, uh, so now I move on with Emmanuel Cerero from the Coaster Central. Emmanuel, go ahead, please. Hello, Yo, nice to meet you. Well, I have two questions for you. And what do you expect and what can we expect from your presentation at the Viva Latino Festival? You know, uh, nice to meet you as well. Um, I'm, I've been thinking about it. Do we play a, a pop set? Do we play like, play the hits? Or do we play something really heavy? Actually, do you have a suggestion? <laughs> Should we play something really high energy and and just shred as much as possible? Or do you just play hits? It's always a it's always a question when you play festivals. I think we open heavy, then we, we close strong. Okay, okay. And how do you feel? And your team feel about being part of the most of the biggest festivals in the country, such as Viva Latino? It's incredible. It's incredible to be invited back. It's incredible to be traveling the world. It's it's incredible to do all of this. I, I grew up very rural, Alaskan. My my family were dog sled mushers. So we were, we were out in the woods a lot. We were in cabins a lot. I never thought I'd be doing this for a living. And I'm extremely appreciative of the opportunity to do it. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, John. Welcome to Mexico and good luck in Viva Latino Festival. Muchas gracias, Adriana. De nada. Thank, Thank you. you. So now I move on with Gabriela from Caleidoscopio Cultural. Gabriela, please go ahead. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Hear me? Yeah. Yes. 
Thank you. Hello, nice to meet you. I have a question for you. Uh, between the release of your first album and the last album, Chris Black Changed My Life, many things changed. Before we had MySpace, now we have TikTok. Also, artificial intelligence influenced everything, a pandemic, top of the world, etc. And um, how did cultural and gener generational change impact your musical approach? Wow, uh, I I find I find it, it fascinating, honestly. I, I I look at the way people consume music, and and I think a lot of people think it's scary, like things are moving too fast, and you you end up in a place where there's too many bands to listen to, there's too many things happening, and that's that's kind of like the alarmist look at AI and, and what it's done. I think it has done some negative things like flatten culture. Um, I can find the same restaurants in Portland that I can find in Germany. Yeah. It, it's it's kind of the, the same everywhere. So we're really in in this place where we need to be preserving culture and preserving those things that make your areas great. Like what makes your community, what makes your your, your culture great. When I think about music, though, I think it's it's really great. I, I watch kids deep dive and they go into YouTube and they they watch everything that the artist has ever made. They watch all the interviews. They see where the music started, where it comes from. They say see who influenced that artist, and it, and it's it's really very very inspiring. Watching kids consume so much music, and you can hear it in their music. So. As as much as this like music is this big melting pot currently of R and B soul, you know, and then culture entering as well, it is is also just very beautiful seeing how this music touches kids. I mean, that's that's my favorite part about music. I, I love seeing a, a little baby dance. In, in their car seat, dance in their seat yeah. as they're eating dinner. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. And I love wow. people having access. <laughs> Thank you for your perspective. And I hope you have a great presentation at Viva Latino. Nice to meet you. Thank you, Adriana. You're welcome. Thank you, Gabriela. So now we move on with <coughs> Samuel from Los Festivales. Samuel, please go ahead. Hi, John. Nice to meet you. How hey. are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I have three questions, three fast questions. Uh, one is about the Grammys. You won a Grammy for the Best Urban Contemporary Album a few years ago. What was yeah. your initial reaction to the news? And what does it mean to you to win that award? Especially given the controversy surrounding about the Grammys. Yeah, I I didn't set out to win Grammys. I set out to play music. You know, I, I like making art and I, I that's the most important thing at the end of the day. I do remember being there and 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 thinking it's so it's so crazy that this song was so big that they, they took us out of the alternative categories. And I, I have to say that that was really disappointing, if I'm just being honest, because okay. that's that's all we've been. We've been a, a rock band. We've been an alternative band. And they kind of forced us into this uh, pop category because the song because the song was so big. But it really started at alternative radio. It, it was 26 weeks at alternative radio in the U.S. at number one. And... I never thought I'd have a song like that, you know, like I, I wrote that song thinking about riding in the truck with my parents, listening to the Marvelettes and the Beatles. And I just wanted to write a Motown groove. I wanted to write one of those Motown songs, two minutes and 30 seconds. And that's it. So it, it was all exciting. It, it's really exciting to be honored uh, by the Grammys but uh, it's also not why we do this. 
Thank you. And my second question is about the festivals. What do you like the most about the festivals? <clears throat> I like being able to see music. I, I like being able to hey. be around different musicians. I, I love seeing people enjoy themselves. I like to, I, I'm an introvert. I, I don't, I don't really like being in groups of people, but I really enjoy watching people enjoy themselves. I, I love seeing people around, loving the same thing that I love. It makes me feel seen. It makes me feel like I'm a part of something greater when I see people enjoying the same thing that I enjoy on stage. So yeah, it's beautiful. Is there anything you don't like about the festivals? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's uh, it, there are things that are that are like different with festivals. They're they're very rigid, like they because they have to yeah. be. But that, it's also something that I love about festivals. I love that it's a variety show, and you better hit your mark. Because the next person's coming up. I love that. Okay. So. Thank you, John. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And we will see you at Viva Latino. I can't wait. This is making me so excited. Like, I am so filled with joy coming out here. Cool. It's going to be great. I, I assure you that. Gracias, Abri. <laughs> <Then now that, laughs> That's awesome. So now, so now I move on with our next uh, our next question this is from Jesus de Beba who he's right there <laughs> so Jesus is asking you this so psychedelia is a journey into the inner self what have you seen in your journey and how do you project that in your songs I've, I've seen um I, I think honesty is really important in in psychedelic psychedelic music. Um, being introspective. I, I grew up in a place where I would look up and you could see everything. I, I grew up, you would see the stars. It's, there's no light. Uh, it's just dark. I grew up in a place where you could really let your imagination go and, and take that journey into outer space. Through through music, I've found honesty in myself. When you sit down and write, and you don't think about what you're what you're doing, I, I love word association, and just letting things flow, and and letting it come out as it comes out. It's it's a really special genre of music where it's total freedom, total freedom to create, total freedom to have feelings total freedom to 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 find things in yourself and in chris black changed my life in our new album i i found a lot of things that were happening in my life just just through writing and and looking back at it retrospectively like retroactively looking back and saying that's what i was writing about i was writing about our family i was writing about our group and then i was writing about my individual journey and, and what we've gone through with chris black with my daughter my, our, Zoe and I have a daughter named Frances who has a, a rare disease and I found myself writing about these scary thoughts and trying to keep it exciting and uplifting and when it when it needed to be it could be it could be down and could be thoughtful yeah thank you for the question thank you John Chucho quieres que te la traduzca? Estás en mute. You are on mute. Por favor, si eres tan amable, Adri. I'm going to do a quick translation, John. <laughs> so, um, él dice que la honestidad es, es muy importante. También menciona un poco acerca de, de crecer en Alaska y también cómo creció viendo las estrellas y que como crecer en, en ese sitio le permitió dejar que su imaginación volara y también a través de la música ha encontrado la honestidad en sí mismo. También menciona que la psicodelia es 
eh, te da una libertad total para, para escribir, para crear y eh, también menciono un poco que en este nuevo disco justo se permitió tener esta libertad total eh, que escribió acerca de muchas cosas que, que pasaban o que pasan en su vida acerca de su familia, del grupo, de su jornada individual. Eh, también eh, escribió como, como pensamientos eh, y quería también eh, plasmar algo como emocionante y, y que pues te levantara como el, como el ánimo. Menciona también que él... Eh, y Zoe, que es otra integrante del grupo, tienen una hija que tiene una enfermedad genética rara y entonces también dice que se encontró a sí mismo escribiendo y plasmando en sus canciones acerca de esta situación. Y ya, <ríe> fue muy rápido, pero ahí va. Ah, sí. Muchas gracias. Listo. De nada. Thank you, John. <ríe> yeah, thank you. So now I move on with a question from Hugo from Conexión Interna. He is asking you, nowadays, you know, there are a lot of collaborations in music. Have you ever thought about, you know, doing a collab with a Latin American band now that you are, you know, back in, in, in Mexico? That is question number one. And question number two, it is, um, have you ever heard, you know, this, this genre that it's called Corridos Tumbados? And, you know, in Mexico, and, uh, and what do you think about it, if you have heard them? Okay, so I, I have a good friend in Portland, Jose <laughs> Rivas, who shares music with me all the time, and he's always giving me Mexican playlists, and I love all of it. it it's something I've talked about since the beginning of this band. I, I'm not really interested in collaborating with just American artists, you know, that's kind of boring to me. I love the idea of like, I've always wanted to collaborate with Mexican artists. That's that's where we we worked with Chamanas back back in, in two, 2013. And a set of romance as well. Um, uh, Natalia La Fricade on this, this new album. Chris Black changed my life. She sings on a song called Thunderdome that, that was written on the border of Mexico and, uh, and Texas. We were in the studio together and that, that just ended up happening. It, it was very serendipitous. It, very, it just happened. I, I love Mexican artists. I love the passion. I love, I love hearing the culture in the music. And I think that's going to be a very repetitive answer from me. But I love hearing where people are from in the music they make it's it's a it's a really beautiful and and um increasingly rare thing today with with the algorithms and ai and all, playlists being curated for you mexico is one of those places where you you hear it in the pop music you hear it in in the punk music you can hear culture it's, it's a very special place y'all are from a very special place Thank you so much, John. And now I'll move on with a question from Noemi from Faro en las Calles. Noemi, please go ahead. Hi, John. Nice to meet you. Hey. Talking about your experiences in Mexico, could you share any funny story about uh, maybe some of these parties that you're going? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I can expose anyone, but uh, <laughs> I know, I know, but some a little maybe. Oh man, we we had we went to a party one night in Mexico City. It was in this really beautiful like loft style apartment building, and we, we went in, and it was just it, it it must have been like forty or fifty people in this this apartment. Like it was it was a lot of people in an apartment. And just hanging off the the balcony, like, <laughs> we're just we're kind of wild, like we are kind of a wild crew, and it was just so cool. Like I I remember sitting in the kitchen, drinking and laughing, and in the living room listening to music. There's music playing in the living room. There's a record player, and uh, it's just a really really great group of friends. We've we've always connected with people and. 
that's that's one thing that is consistent with this band always is connecting with people we've always connected with people and we make a point to hang with our friends and make new friends so it it's it's always just a lot of laughing thank you so much gracias Adri. <laughs> Thank you so much, Remy and John. So now I move on with Gilberto Flores. Gilberto, please go ahead and do your question. Hey, hola, Adriana. Muchas gracias. Hello, John. Hey. It's a pleasure to have this conversation with you. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys will have a very busy 2024. You will, you will play a lot of gigs, a lot of festivals. Uh, is there any plans to make uh, new music this year or you're uh, just going to play live? Yeah, there is. We're, we're going to make new, new music this year. I, so four years ago, I broke my jaw. And when I broke my jaw, this is three years after Feel It Still and Woodstock came out. Or two, I guess it was two and a half years after that. Um, that album came out. I break my jaw. And during COVID, I actually had a broken jaw that whole period. It was a result of an injury when I was younger, where I had broken my jaw that I didn't know about. So it, it took a really long time to, to get everything working properly uh, again. And as soon as it started working, I, I, I made Chris Black change my life and finish that album. And it just made me, it, it lit a fire in me to to get back to <laughs> I like that these uh face the, the zoom reacts to whatever you do <laughs> I'm sorry uh I don't know if you guys saw that the fireworks going off behind me um yeah I want to make new music I want to make a prog album I want to I want to get spacey you know and and just start making music again now that I I, I can physically do it And what can we expect in your new songs? Because your latest record is very personal, very emotional, very deep in a lot of sense. Uh, you guys uh, will try to find some different topics, uh, different stories? Yeah, always. But I, I would say also, like, this, the story is, is, is my story. It's a, a personal story. And you kind of dig deeper. I, I, I find that with music. You end up digging deeper internally. So you find emotion that you didn't know was buried down there. And that's something that happens with age too. I mean, you, 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 as you grow, you learn and you learn about yourself. And Chris Black changed my life. It's very representative of, of where I, I was currently at. It was these feelings of self doubt and where, where am I going? And how did I get here? It was what, what happened to the family that we created and Am I on this journey alone? And you feel very alone when things happen with your your family as they did with mine. My daughter has a, a, a very rare disease. And Zoe and I talk about this constantly. Um, I, I see I see a few different albums on, on our horizon though. I see I see a more stripped back personal album. And I see something that's that's very minimalist. And then I see a maximalist prog record. I really want, I've, I've loved Fragile by Yes. Like I would love to make my Fragile. And, and then finally, there's a dark side of the moon too. Yes. Let's make finally, that. John, <laughs> uh, now that you mentioned these, these emotions, uh, the, we need to understand uh, more the importance of uh, talk about mental health and the power of music in order to uh, improve our mental health. Definitely. I, again, it's it's something that I really love about Mexico. I love I love I love places that that appreciate their culture, appreciate music, appreciate the arts, and and really value the arts. There, there's a value to this. Like when when you see that baby dancing, that's something that's in internal. That's not just they're not just dancing because they just heard heard the song and that's what you do when you hear songs. That's something that's deep in our souls. That's something that is in our DNA, it's in our genetics. You know, like we we need music. Music is life. Those songs are, are important. You see it in the birds. 
You see it when birds sing. You see it in nature. You see it in the mating dances and the mating calls. You hear songs all, all over the planet. We need to appreciate them. It's it's a it's a major it's a major issue in the U.S. especially when when you travel around and music is not appreciated. When music and when the arts are not appreciated, th things start to crumble. I, I see that as the major divide in the U.S. is that there's there's not an appreciation for the arts, or it's actively suppressed. And I would say that it's actively suppressed because art art offers opportunity, art offers personal growth, it, it, it offers an outlet for your mental health. We shouldn't be on the social media talking <laughs> these, these these reactions in my video are so ridiculous but we, we get stuck on social media constantly and it's all about taking a moment for ourselves and listening to, to music appreciating what's there appreciating the people around us caring about the folks uh, around us and again, I, we have a daughter with a, a rare disease who is on the spectrum as well. And I see this this really extreme need for care for, for our kids. Te teach them farming, teach them how to raise chickens, teach them how to interact in, in community, teach them weaving, teach them life skills alongside math and, and uh, vocabulary things like that. We should be we should be teaching these skills. They're they're very important to to our survival as a people. Thank you so much, John. Looking forward to see you in Vive Latino. Adriana, muchas gracias. Thank you. Thank you, Gilberto. So, now I'll move on with our last question. I'm so sorry, guys. It's from Asem from Polvora. Asem, are you here? Sí, hola. Go ahead, Asem. Thanks. Uh, now I would like you. I would like to ask you something about the ideals of rock, because your band was involved in some events with Bernie Sanders in 2020. So, uh, how is rock involved with politics and politicians right now, in your opinion? And do you think it's a good relationship? Yeah. Um, okay. So it's Cornell West. We, we were with Dr. Cornell West recently. Um, I guess our band is always in favor of whatever is trying to buck the system. Uh, music is a voice. It's, it's a voice of the people. And it, it's, it's the, Be the Beatles stopped the Vietnam War. Music, music is power, and, and I believe that that is the reason music gets taken away in schools, it, it, back home where I come from. I believe that's the way the reason art gets taken away in schools. Why art programs are underfunded where I come from. Again, like I, I keep circling around, like that's it's one of the most beautiful things about about your country and the other countries that we we go to is when, when I see art that is cared for and nurtured. Rock music is a response to those things being taken away. Rock music is, is fighting back. It, it, it's integral to, to change and, and these movements. It's these gatherings of people. It, we, we come together around this music and I see really great opportunity for change. And that's coming from a kid who grew up very rural. I, I grew up in a, like, we were a bunch of redneck kids, like we were hillbillies. And I don't know if you know what that means, but we got dirty and we didn't know better. And a, as I've grown and as I've learned things, I, I see the power that we have and I see the power that we all have. And I see the power that the youth has. It's, it's everything in the world. Music, music is necessary. And rock music and punk music and rap music, these are these are our middle fingers <laughs> to the system.
Thank you so much, John. Finally, uh, could you just say, you know, feel as words and maybe and also uh, invite all the people to come and see you on the Festival Vive Latino uh, the next uh, March 16, please. Yeah, I, I can't wait. I'm so excited to get back to Mexico. We all are. It's you have such a beautiful country. It's such a beautiful place. And I just love seeing music fans at these festivals. I, I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. Don't miss us. Thank you so much. Gracias a todas y todos. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you, John. I hope you have a good rest of the day and we will see you very soon in Mexico City. Oh, well, thank you all so much. This is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Have a so good cool. one. Bye. Thank sí. you, John. Gracias, Adri. Saludos a todos. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias.